partner that I am collaborating with in sharing my story, my strength, hope, and experience, and the creation of a nonprofit organization for families and other loved ones who have loved ones with serious mental illnesses. I have been working on this mission my entire life, starting from when I was a child growing up in a family where there was significant mental illness. My grandmother was manic depressive and in and out of Creedmoor State Hospital until my grandfather passed away when I was 16. And then she, through various and sundry machinations of her daughters, ended up in an, one of the first assisted living facilities in Queens, New York. My grandfather was a recovering alcoholic and a recovering gambler, and he uh, initiated the beginning of AA in Queens, New York in the late 1950s, early 1960s. And into this home, my mother brought my sister and I and my dad. My dad ended up leaving a couple of years after we moved in because my mother said she couldn't take care of her parents, her children, and him without some help from him. And later in life, it turned out that he too was diagnosed with bipolar. He was diagnosed in his 50s. My aunt was diagnosed also in her 50s with bipolar. And my sister was diagnosed when she was young, but was untreated until probably about 12 years ago. And then she went off her meds and the rest is history. But bipolar runs rampant in my family on all sides, um, my mother's side, my father's side. So one of the things I've always wanted to do was to fix, help, guide, understand, figure out um, how to make things better, not only for people like my grandmother, but for families like ours, because honestly, we weren't very nice to her. And to be fair to us as a family, we were in the dark. There was no information, no resources, nothing available to help us plow through the serious mental illness that ran rampant in our family. And of course, there was also the shame and the stigma and all of that. So I left home early. I was 16 when I graduated high school and I uh, decided to be a social worker. And I went to school to become a social worker and the program lost its accreditation. So I took a double degree in philosophy and sociology. And therein lies the course of my very forked career. I have lots of education. I have lots of community experience. But most importantly, I have the experience of having many family members and loved ones with serious mental illnesses. And... In 1996, I started doing parenting education in a shelter for homeless families. And what I found was that it was really necessary to arm parents with the skills and tools they needed, especially if they grew up in families like mine, because frankly, they didn't have a blueprint for how to do it in a healthy way. And, and I developed a coaching practice, which later turned into... I have to do something different for families. I became an in-home therapist and I worked with a therapeutic mentor and I worked with the parents of kids with significant mental health challenges. Uh, typically they were out of the hospital. Some of them we were trying to prevent from going into the hospital. It involved a great deal of referrals and resources and all of that. And what I found was that the most valuable part of the, of the job for me was working with the families, having them gather as a family, integrating the person with the illness into the family fabric as they had been prior to their illness. And this is really key because in our society too often, the focus is on the person who is ill and we forget that they are part of a family system. And as such, they have been a contributing member of the family and probably still want to be a contributing member of the family and families aren't guided on how to do that so i founded grow a strong family which is a nonprofit in um 2014 after running it as a for-profit in 2012 
when my daughter was diagnosed with bipolar, uh, she went through a major manic episode and I watched my beloved child, a daughter of my heart and soul, uh, slip away from me and, and become somebody very different because of the symptoms of her illness. And over the course of that two years between 2012 and 2014, she got very ill and basically divorced herself from the family, created an alternate narrative to her life prior to being ill and has had nothing to do with um, me and my husband since then. Her dad adopted her when she was 10 and it was a big party because it was something she'd always wanted. We met him when she was two and a half. So he was really the only dad she ever really knew. And then in 2015, my niece, um, whose both parents were gone and who was raised by my husband's family, became very ill and we connected or reconnected. And I have been her primary caregiver. So even though my daughter exited stage left, my niece entered stage right. And she is the daughter of my heart. And she has taught me so much. But the main thing that I have learned from her is how to maintain a strong family by integrating everybody in the family, regardless of their status of health. Um, it's not a marriage. It's not in sickness and death. Till death do us part. A family is a connection of individuals who love one another, will do anything for one another, accept one another, and adapt accordingly. And that's what we have done. And the benefits to all of us are exponentially created. So to make a very long story very uh, short for the moment, um, I've been asked by many people to please share my story, to get it out there to let people know that there is hope, that families can integrate loved ones with serious cognitive um, mental illnesses, cognitive and brain disorders. There's so many different words now to describe the same phenomena. But if you have somebody in your family who is schizophrenic, who is schizoaffective, who is bi bipolar or manic depressive, who has a serious personality disorder, there are so many ways to integrate them back into the fabric of your family. And I'm very passionate about this, but I'm not rich. And I've, I've worked in social services my entire life. And we've been supporting Grow a Strong Family so that families have access 24-7 to web-based materials, which I update and upgrade regularly. I have a fantastic board that's very um, active in fundraising for Grow a Strong Family. But writing this book is sharing my story and how Grow a Strong Family is my, um, what do they call it, a magnus opus or opus magnus. It's my life's work in that it's how I was able to heal myself and understand that my daughter is real, has been really ill and that her behavior subsequent to her illness is part of her illness and to not take it personally, but it is a long journey in doing that. And then my niece has taught me so much about how hard she has worked to gain stability and to maintain stability and to understand the setbacks and to work with her on those by integrating her into the family and thereby strengthening our family. And in that process, I need your support. I need your help. I really want to get my story out there because I know that other families need to know that they too can integrate their loved ones. The outcomes are better when the whole family is involved and it's hard to be involved when the only person they're focusing on is the person with the illness. Not healthy. It's not how you create a family quilt, if you will. So please help me get my story out there so that I can get it to other people who really need it. The outcomes for everybody will be better. Thank you so much and thanks for listening.